Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Leadership Lunch Chat with myself, Amy Vetter, and Jen Wilson, my good friend. And uh, this week on Leadership Lunch Chat, we're going to talk about rebuilding trust in relationships at work. Uh, you know, many of us can go through just having the same story repeat itself over and over and over and just assume that that's the best it can ever get. And in the work that we do, we try to help people uncover what's holding them back and what could hopefully push someone through that belief that it can't be fixed. So Jen, do you want to start today? Yes. Thanks, Amy. And, um, you know, trust is uh, like a redwood tree or something. It takes a long time to grow and it's it can be cut down very quickly, you know, um, and um, some people feel like once distrust, you know, manifests within them of, of another person or another entity or of a leadership group or I don't know, of a client or whatever it is, that once that distrust starts to manifest that, okay, it's over, you know, mm -hmm. and the way we, um, the way we operate when we don't trust is so inefficient and so um you know uninspiring uh it's hard to like find joy in a relationship that where i don't trust you know so it's really important to just sort of say hey i've got you know either i feel untrusted or i don't trust here and it can be rebuilt and cleaned up and repaired and instead of just operating in it in resignation and accepting it, um, I'm going to go about cleaning it up. I'm going to go about, you know, kind of like a wound. It's a little bit like a wound. I tell people sometimes we've got this distrust between us and, you know, it's like a wound and it needs to be cleaned out and it needs to be healed. And the only way to clean it out is to have super honest conversations about what led to the fracture and um you know what we're concerned about and ways each of us could come to the table differently on, on an ongoing basis in the relationship and and start the healing process so anyway uh you know number one step is notice it number two is um commit to to start cleaning it up yeah I uh, have encountered this so many different times over the last few months, and it's just uh, fascinating to me that most of it comes down to communication, oh, yeah. that no one's actually speaking out loud. It's either in their head where um, there's a lot of stories or created stories that might not even have happened or maybe predict that they might happen so that they're holding on to that instead of actually communicating uh, and, and talking to another person to find out, you know, is this really the case and really trying to get to the underlying path. Uh, and then also just the human side, I think we lose that a lot of times. So what I have found over time is that when relationships start getting hard, um, whether it be in the workplace, actually, this was something that I just talked to my son about in a group that he was leading, um, that we start getting disappointed or just feeling like it'll never change or it's not going to get better, it's going to get worse, or um, rather than stepping back and saying, is there another way? Is there another way to handle this? And I'll, I'll use an example that happened uh, with my son this week, which was so awesome to see. But we had gone to breakfast a couple of weeks ago, and he actually started um, with a few others, this club at, and I call it a club. It, it's more than a club. <laughs> Um, it's their heart. Um, it, it literally was like starting a business. They've made a huge impact on campus uh, with the work that they've done. But all of them are seniors and they are transitioning um, out and so concerned that the next people are not going to 
feel the same way or care the same way or put the same time into it because it's been like a full-time job. And the stories that were happening about that were just like growing. And what I asked him to do, I was like, well, maybe try another approach. And when you're talking to the younger students, tell them your story, tell them how you even came to be, why you created this, like, why was it important? What were you trying to accomplish? Because the people that weren't there in the beginning don't know why. And uh, he called me this week after they had the meeting and just was so excited because they did do it. They told their story to the club and what came out of it was so much more passion and also people's stories that they didn't even know of how important it was to them. And so that's the thing when we just like put up these walls or make assumptions and not realize everyone is human in the room and, and walking in their own experience and people have compassion. Like once they understand the humanness of someone, it can break down those walls that form these belief systems and cause all this friction where we can just like take a moment and just talk about the human side of why something matters to us and why we got there and what is the background and the layers deep so that you have somewhere to start from. Yes. Awesome. I, uh, you know, what I heard in that besides the humanist, which is super critical is shared ideals or shared vision or shared mission or, you know, yeah. shared, shared outcomes um, you know, usually we're in these relationships, especially business relationships, because we're trying to accomplish something together. Yes. And we lose sight of that. And, and, mm -hmm. and when we've seen really serious trust breakdowns and relationship uh, issues, it's almost like we, we completely forget the larger, broader mission and start focusing on rather petty Yes. And and minute and almost meaningless day-to-day mm -hmm. uh, -day interactions, emails, you know, that, you know, did you hear what she said in that meeting? And, you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> like the stuff we're focusing on is like, what? You know, wait a minute. Let's go. Let's go back to this broader ideal of what what. And, and usually you can find out that we all share some intention together. Mm -hmm. You know, like the yoga intention, you know, man, let's, okay. let's set an intention for our practice today. You know, like we have intentions that get us in these groups or get us in these departments or get us in these firms or get us with these clients. And, and those are usually shared intentions. And if we could presence them, then we could at least call ourselves to the, like, how could we make this work together? How could we work better together in this shared intention or this mission or ministry that we're on? And, and that can help. The other thing is um, to just really stop. And you and I say this, I feel like in every leadership lunch chat, it's like, sorry, everybody, we have to go here. But, um, you know, to really stop trying to make the problems in the relationship someone else's fault. Yes. <laughs> and I stop blaming, looking for somebody to blame. And you know, I'm on this big pipeline project. And one of the things I experience when people come to talk to me about pipeline is that everybody's trying to blame someone else, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. And or maybe it's say the problem lies with someone else because blame is right. a little strong. But instead of just going, hey, man, I have a breakdown in my relationship with so and so or with you know, these two teams aren't working well together, or whatever. What could we do differently? What have we done that could have caused this? What could we change? What could we stop doing? What could we start doing? What have I been running over here? Those stories, Amy, that you talked about, instead of communicating with my mouth, I've been running stories in my head and also maybe triangulating in the background with other people on my team or my yeah, side or whatever. And so like, what, what are the stories I'm telling myself about this instead of what are the facts, the truth, where's data or proof? Um, when you stop like trying to figure out how to run the story and pass responsibility off to someone else, then we can get some. Yeah. You know, then we can get some. Well, 
And I do believe it's a choice. I was in a group coaching call yesterday, um, kind of having this conversation of, you know, where, you know, there's a feeling about the profession that it's just the profession. This is the way life is and so forth. But the people that decide to take personal responsibility for their life, set boundaries, okay. yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. set boundaries and make sure that they're putting work in the right place and they're communicating, right? They're not hiding that they stopped working. They said, I'm going to be with my kids right now. Yes. Um, I'll be online from eight to 10 tonight. Um, that's when I'll be back online or I will not be back online till eight. Like, or I have this time during my day that I need to get my own work done. I can't take questions. I'm not being mean. This right. is not mean. <laughs> this is so that I get my work done so that I can be completely present with you when you need my help. And you're actually like educating people, but it's a personal choice that you're open to that message, that you're open to making that change because it is work to make that change. It is easier to kind of just talk negatively, say, you know, this is just the way it is. And, you know, kind of, you know, I have a great cartoon um, of showing like, you know, I worked 70 hours last week and the other guy's like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So like, but like what? some people like no, some people no. like just to have this like you know badge of honor like even though they're complaining about it they they want to tell everyone about it and so it it's when you're ready to hear the message to take responsibility and sometimes that takes maturity you know in your relationships and for yourself but when you you know and this is the same thing here is like i can keep blaming that i'm dealing with hard personalities or so forth or is there another approach is that what is my 100 percent responsibility which we say over and over again um in changing the way a conversation goes and is there a place for me to not talk like to not say my side to just be silent just hear it you know, and, and how do I get in that space to get myself present so that I don't have stories going on in my head while someone else is talking? Like I'm truly, truly there listening, open palms, not closed off um, to see, is there something I missed? Is there something that they're saying, like maybe one little thing that I'm like, hmm, I haven't heard that before. You know, I get that in yoga all the time when I teach yoga. It's like I say the same cue every single time and then someone will come to your class for a year and then one Saturday they'll be like, that cue you said today was like really good. It was like, that was the day you decided to hear it. Like I actually say it every time. <laughs> but it's yeah. like when you're ready to do it. And so it's important for relationships. And if you truly feel passionate about something is to find other, be open to finding other approaches if you truly want to solve something. Yeah. And if you want to rebuild trust, that idea of coming in palms up and listening is crucial, right? So I, mm -hmm. I don't know what caused the fracture in my relationship, but I know I could be as much as 100% responsible for it. Yeah. And I'm not going to try to come into this conversation looking for ways that I can catch you while you're talking and go, aha, that's exactly what, you know, like it, this is it. I'm coming because I, I want to say, here's, here's what I perceive our shared vision or ideals to be. I think we're both working toward the same things. We feel like we have friction. What could I do to change it? What, yes. what and is there anything I need to apologize from the past? What have I done in the past that has created this friction? Is there anything I need to clean up? And what would you like to me to do going forward to rebuild this relationship? Now, a lot of us don't, you know, like we're so busy being indignant and righteous and right and uh, angry mm -hmm. or irritated or whatever, making them wrong. 
that it's hard to go in there and go, hey, man, what could I change? That we we want to be like, you need to change everything right now, you know? And so, yeah. you know, that, but that Pick doesn't, that, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't solve anything. Nobody right. will hear that. And it, no. and even if they do hear it because you have positional authority, mm -hmm. if you have positional authority and you do the old, you know, you need to straighten this up and you can't do this anymore and all that stuff, they hear it, but they're not committing. They're just yeah. enduring that conversation. And then who knows what happens after that? More chips on shoulders and more grinding teeth and more triangulation and more passive aggressive behavior or whatever. And so going in and saying, hey, I really want to... Uh, I want an authentic and real relationship with you and and I don't want the friction that we have and I want us I want us to work better and I just need to hear from you what can I or we change sometimes it's institutional like there's this friction mm -hmm. between you know let's say the managers and the partners there's friction right. or there you know friction between the tax department and the audit department you know I mean right. it's a, it, it's all over the place this kind of stuff is sort of the the underbelly of human beingness, you know, this garbage yeah. that we produce in our relationships that we never clean up. But um, if you want inspiration and you want more ease to getting to that shared vision, you've got to clean up these relationship messes to take responsibility and listen to suggestions for change behavior and you change. And then if they don't change and it's always you changing and you aren't yeah. finding any rhythm, then maybe that relationship isn't one worth keeping. Yeah. And so I would offer, and this is a small percentage, but this happened to me um, when I was in college, um, okay. that there are some people with personality disorders. <laughs> so <laughs> like you are not going to always solve every relationship, but information is still good so that you can make better decisions. And so what happened to me in my first co-op job I ever had, there was uh, eight co-ops on this job. And so I was in the class of the newer co-op. So there was a woman that was a co-op like a year older than me that had already been there a year, kind of ran the roost, like knew what to do there, you know, amongst the co-ops. And so the first day I ever met her, she looked me up and down and hated me. Like it, it was like pure, oh like, <laughs> hate. like, I, I mean, I felt it. And from that day forward, she, I've never been more miserable in a job because if people talk to me, she would get mad at them and no one wanted to be on her bad side because if you're on her bad side, then she's talking about you. Um, and so it was a very difficult relationship. I was miserable every single day. And it was a six month co-op. And I didn't feel, cause I was younger to talk to someone about it. Cause I didn't want to cause trouble and I was doing good in my job, but it was very uncomfortable. So the next year I had, uh, the job offered to me again. And I saw that she was going to go back again. And I bumped into her in the garage and in the parking lot uh, going into school and I and I called out to her and I said can we talk a second and so I decided to do a different approach and I said there must be something I've done I'm like so whatever I've done that's offended you or hurt you I apologize I'd like to know what it is so I don't repeat it and she took a pause and looked at me and she said I don't like you I'm just a beat. <laughs> And that was it. But it gave me the information I needed. Like some people are just on their own journey. There was no working in that relationship, right? And there's going to be a small percentage of people that we work with that just are like that, right? That aren't open to having a conversation, that aren't open to change. But when you have still tried to approach it, then the step back is, I'm actually not mad at her. That information helped me to make decisions yeah. I needed to make for myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, she's on her own path. Like this really has nothing to do with me, even though she doesn't like me for whatever reason. 
it doesn't have anything to do with me. There's nothing I can shift here. But then you start making a decision of what other things you can shift. So I do want to say in this that not everything is solvable. Um, because, <laughs> because, you know, 100%. some people are just, you know, who they are and, and how they're showing up is how they're showing up. But it's important to still use those same practices in order to find another path for yourself because keep going up against someone like that every single day is not going to create another result. No. And complaining without commitment right. to have the conversation is not going to buy you anything either. Right. And I, I agree. It doesn't always get group hugged, uh, kumbaya and, you know, high fived out. Uh, but it does actually happen a decent amount yeah. that we discover a miscommunication, a misinterpretation, a simple fix to, uh, you know, shifted behaviors that really are no big uh, thing for one of us or both of us. And our relationship suddenly becomes better. And by having the courage to go palms up and come in and say, I really want a better relationship with you. And what could I do to change? Just so often that sort of melts uh, the heart of the person on the other side or the people, and they really get where you are coming from and your intention. And they begin to, you know, look at themselves and, and really work on this. And so anyway, I think it's worth the dialogue. Uh, yeah. It's always worth trying. And then of course, as you said, you have enough of those conversations with the same people and you discover that their commitment is not the same as yours and they're not really uh, healthy in their relationships then you've got to figure out a different path for yeah. yourself, for sure. Exactly. Well, hopefully this was helpful for those of you that joined us today. And feel free to serve up any content that you want us to cover on future Leadership Lunch Chats. And as usual, Jen, it's been a joy talking to you. And I hope everybody has a great weekend.